Girl, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my June wrap up. I read a total of 13 books in the month of June. I talked about the first seven of these in my Friday Reads video, which I'll link in a card or down below. I won't go into too much detail about those books, since I did share my thoughts on those books in that video, but I'll talk about them a little. The first book I read this month was Once and for All by Sarah Dessen. This is a YA contemporary standalone and it's Sarah Dessen's most recent release. The main character in this book is the daughter of a wedding planner, and she helps her mother her plan weddings during the summer. The main character meets this guy named Ambrose at a wedding she's working at with her mother, and since Ambrose needs a summer job for the summer, he ends up taking the job with the main character's mom, helping them plan weddings for the summer. The main character and Ambrose have an interesting friendship. I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars, it was really good. It was a cute romance, and I would consider it one of Sarah Dessen's best. I really enjoyed it. The next book I read was Someone Like You by Sarah Dessen. This is another YA contemporary standalone, and it's Sarah Dessen's debut novel. This book follows a girl named Haven, and she's struggling with a lot of changes that are happening around in her life. Her parents are divorced. Her father is remarrying someone. Her sister is also getting married. Her mom is also trying to embrace the single way. Haven doesn't really know how to deal with all these changes, and she remembers a summer where all of her family were happy and together, and she's wondering if she should try to get some of this happiness back into her family, or if she should embrace the uh, changes that are happening. I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. There were some annoying things about the writing style. You could definitely tell that this was a debut novel, but I liked the family relationships that were explored in this book, and it's definitely worth reading. That's why I gave it three stars. Next up, I read Someone Like You by Sarah Dessen. Again, this is YA Contemporary, and it follows this girl named Hallie as she's trying to help her best friend Scarlett cope with her pregnancy. I liked Hallie and Scarlett's friendship in this book. There's also a romance with Hallie and another character. I did have some problems with this romance, but overall it was a good book. The next book I read was Dreamland by Sarah Dessen. I also gave this book three stars. This book follows a main character named Caitlin, who feels lost, since her older sister Cassandra has abandoned the family without really any explanation at all. Caitlin meets Rogerson. They start a form a relationship with each other, but then this relationship takes a dark turn. This book explores an abusive relationship and what it's actually like when someone is experiencing an abusive relationship. I thought the topic was hand in this book well. However, I didn't really believe in the emotional connection between Caitlin and Rogerson at the start of their relationship. The romance just wasn't really there for me. Their connection was insta-love, and that didn't really work for me. It was still a good book overall. The romance or relationship aspect missed the mark for me, which is why I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read The Truth About Forever by Sarah Des. This was actually a reread for me, since I read I read this book a couple of years ago, but I wanted to refresh my memory as to what the, this book was about, so that's why I reread it. I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars the second time around, and I had a lot of the same feelings about the book that I did during the first time I read it. This book is definitely one of my favorites by Sarah Dessen. I really like the sweet relationship between the main character and the love interest, and I just liked how all of the side characters were fleshed out and well developed. The next book I read was Where Futures End by Parker P. V. House. This is a YA science fiction standalone, and it's about these five teens who are living their lives across different points in time. Each chapter in this book is written from one of those five teens. We are left guessing as to how all of their lives interconnect. The main character in this book, who we meet at the start of the book, he discovers that he has the ability to see this other world. The world has basically destroyed itself and David feels like this other world is the key to saving the main world and basically the lives of these five teens. While I liked all of the characters and found their individual whole storylines interesting, I did find some parts of the uh, book confusing, so that's why I only gave it 3 out of 5 stars. It was a good science fiction novel and I was at the edge of my seat, but I was also confused at some parts. That's why it was just a middle-of-the-road book for me. The next book I read was Transcend by Jewel E. Ann. 
This is the first book in an adult romance duet. It follows this girl named Swayze, who is a 21-year-old college student, and she's looking for a summer job as a nanny. And she bumps into this guy at her psychologist's office that she remembers, but this person doesn't remember Swayze. And this person that she comes across just happens to be the guy she ends up working for. Since this guy is a single dad with a newborn, and his job is really busy since he's a professor, so he needs a nanny to look after his child. I liked Swayze as a character in this book. She was a nice and relatable character. The strange thing about Swayze, though, is that she remembers people and events from before she was born, and she doesn't know why. She also knows things about Nate, the person she's working for, that he didn't tell her. She's also having these memory flashes of a younger Nate, and she doesn't really know where these memories are coming from. Swayze is also in a relationship with this guy named Griffin. Their relationship is solid, and he knows her really well, and he really loves her. They really fit together as a couple. Nate comes to believe that these memory flashes that Swayze is having means that she's the reincarnated spirit of his childhood best friend that died tragically when they were teenagers. That's also why she remembers things from before she was born, and why she remembers Nate. Swayze isn't really sure what to believe, and she feels really weird about the whole situation. You also come to learn that there are some strange circumstances surrounding Nate's friend's death. That's where the book ends, since it ends on the cliffhanger. Swayze's left wondering what's actually going on with her, and what really happened to Nate's friend. I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. It took me long to come around the idea of reincarnation and the idea of a past life, but as the story progressed, Nate and Swayze's friendship grew on me, so much so that I actually wanted something romantically to happen between Swayze and Nate. This is my first past life story, and I really enjoyed it. Naturally, I read Epic, the final book in this duet. This second book explores more of Swayze and Griffin's relationship, because Swayze isn't really sure if she's a reincarnated spirit, she feels like she's being pulled in two different directions, in her relationship with Griffin, but also in her relationship with Nate. And this sort of confusion causes tension in her relationship with Griffin. At the beginning of the second book, I couldn't really decide who I wanted Swayze to end up with, whether I wanted her to be with Griffin or whether I wanted her to be with Nate. I loved both guys. and. Nate and Griffin both seemed to really care about Swayze. But as the, the story progressed in the second book, it was clear who I wanted Swayze to end up with, and I loved the conclusion into this book. It was everything I wanted for Swayze, and there was a nice resolution to both relationships with Griffin and with Nate. I gave this book 4.5 stars. This book would have been a 5 out of 5 stars for me, if it hadn't have been for some of Swayze's decisions. I was annoyed with some of her decisions in this book and some of her indecisiveness when it came to her relationship with Griffin. Other than that, I really enjoyed it, and I actually enjoyed both books, but I enjoyed the second book more than I did the first one. I also want to say that the writing style in the second book flowed more easily and naturally than the first one. The next book I read was The Hobbit, by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is the prequel novel to the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. I did enjoy the characters and the story and plot overall. My main problem with this book is that I couldn't get behind the writing style. The start of the book was slow, and I just felt that in the writing style there was too much description, especially of the setting. But this book in this series in general, I think, is meant for people who like a slower paced fantasy in my opinion. For me it takes some time to get into slow paced stories, so that's why I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. I did enjoy it, and I do plan on continuing on with the series at some point in the future, but not right now. That's why I only read The Hobbit in June. After reading The Hobbit, I picked up A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. This is the first book in a YA fantasy trilogy, and I'm so glad had I finally read this. I don't know why I waited so long to pick this up. I won't go into too much detail since everyone on booktube knows about this book in this series in general already, but 
I'll just say some of the things that I liked about it. I liked the relationship between Farrah and Tamlin, and just the sexual tension in between them. I liked their dynamic in this book. I also liked the dynamic between Farrah and Lucian and Tamlin in this book. The dynamic between them as a trio was great. I also loved the world that Sarah J Maas created in this book. I found it incredibly interesting and unique. I also liked as the plot progressed, we actually got to see more of the truth and more of what's actually in this world, behind what's presented at the beginning. I loved all the secrets and intrigue in this book. It was just great. I also loved the appearance of Reese End in this book. I suspect it who Reese End was when he first appeared on the page, since everyone raves about Reese End as a character. Even though he treated Farrah like a little bit of an ass, I think he has good reasons for doing what he does. I read A Court of Mist and Fury next, and I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed this book so much more than the first one, and I am totally on Team Reese End. This second book in the trilogy is definitely more new adult than YA, and I definitely noticed that. I would still consider the first book to be YA, but this second book is definitely in new adult territory. I loved the relationship between Reese and, and Farrah in this book and how it developed. They start off as enemies in this book, and then they develop a, a friendship, but then their relationship slowly becomes something more. There is so much tension between them, and they have such good chemistry together. I also loved the introduction of the new characters in this book, since Reese and introduces Farrah to his people at the night court. Farrah naturally fits into this group of people and she grows to really like them. I liked how each of the side characters had their own personality and their own unique ways of relating to one another. I really liked seeing the dynamic between them. It takes a while for Farrah and Reese's relationship to develop in this book, and I loved that slow development. There is a point in this book where Farrah is frustrated with Reese and upset that he didn't tell her that she was his mate. I could understand why Farrah was feeling that way, given what she experienced with Tamlin at the beginning of this book. But again, I understood where Reese End was coming from, because he wants their relationship to be authentic, and not necessarily because of any outside forces. I loved how they finally came together in this book at the cabin scene. That was a really good love scene, especially with the paint being involved since painting is one of Farrah's interests and it's really a part of who she is. So I'm glad that paint was incorporated into that scene. I loved the conclusion into this book. It was surprising and shocking, and it made me really eager to pick up the third book. So naturally, I picked up A Court of Wings and Ruin next. This is the third book in the A Court of Thorns and Rose his series. I loved this third book. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. The main plot in this book is that all the characters are banding together to defeat the King of Hybern. We get more of Farrah and Reese End in this book, but we also get some development with the side characters as well. The side characters and their interactions are what really made the book for me. I really like Farrah's interactions with her sisters named Elaine and Nesta. I'm glad that they've decided to help her in her quest to defeat Hybern. I also like their his interactions with Cassian and Azrael in this book. Farrah is now High Lady of the Night Court. She's developed deeper relationships with all of the characters at the Night Court, and you could definitely see that in this book. Some of my favorite parts in this book were the battle scene and the plot twist that happened near the end of the book. I was shocked and surprised. I didn't see it coming at all. I really liked the conclusion to this book and how this third book ended. There are going to be future books in this series, but this seems like a natural place to stop reading for now. I might continue on with the series as more books in the series are released, or I might wait until the series is all complete before I finish reading it. I hate waiting for books to be released. I find the waiting to be too torturous. That's why I prefer to binge read series. I have detailed reviews on Goodreads about all these books. If you want to hear more of my in-depth thoughts, particularly on A Court of Thorns and Roses, 
A Court of Mist and Fury, and A Court of Wings and Ruin. You can read those reviews down below. Those are all of the books that I read in June. Comment down below and tell me what your favorite book that you read in June was. I'd love to know. If you want to see more videos from me, I'll put some videos up on the screen in case you guys want to check those out. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in my next one.